Friday, August 12th. I'm Will Brinson. I'm your host. I flipped those around and it's making me feel weird. That's fine. Upcoming in this pod, we're going to talk to Jonathan Jones about lots of things related to football, insidery notions, corona, and lots of other things. Uh, in the feed right now, we have a mailbag from Monday. We do mailbag questions every Monday. We compared ourselves to the Ninja Turtles in this one. So that's interesting. Uh, I'm Leonardo by default, apparently. Also from Tuesday, an early gambling guide with R.J. White explaining why home field advantage uh, might matter this year or might not. And we also look at early week one picks. Oh, my goodness. And I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that to get excited for fantasy football season and the draft season, our friends, and if you're watching on YouTube, you can see that I'm saying friends with what John Breach calls bunny ear quotes our friends over the fantasy football today podcast and you can see john john and joe's reaction to that are giving away a 75 inch and a 55 inch television that's right the contest is completely free to enter too to win go to cbssports.com slash giveaway go get yourself a free television don't be related to me or jj or adam mazer you're related to any of those people, you're probably not going to get the TV. But if you're a listener and you want to try and win a free television, go to cbssports.com slash giveaway. You probably have to sign up and get a newsletter or something. It'll be worth it if you get that TV, though. Uh, all right, JJ, you, I liked your face. You could have seen JJ's response to bunny ear quotes. Uh, if you were watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash pick six. Go there and subscribe, even if you don't want to watch. But you can see every show, me, uh, at this point, wearing a hat every day because I, I don't want to brush my hair or shower or anything like that. And I don't feel like getting my, am I, the lady who cuts my hair is on maternity leave. So do you, cut, uh, do you wear a hat when you go on HQ? I don't. Okay. But I haven't been on HQ in a while. Um, <laughs> not a lot of football going on. So uh, NFL wise, no. I mean, I, I say this every day and I'm sure I'll start getting tweets and complaints about it, but like we're okay. It's Wednesday, August the 11th, and I guess people are practicing. Or Wednesday, August 12th. Excuse me. People are starting to practice now. It doesn't really feel like the middle of August, JJ, at, at all. Like it, like from a rhythmic, are we in football standpoint? It doesn't feel that way, does it? No, not at all. I mean, at this point, you know, in my in my previous lives, um, I w would be in a rental car. Bouncing Somewhere in the, the south doing the, oh, yeah, in, in the Rust Belt, you know, popping right. from, yeah, Cleveland going down to Cincinnati with a stopover in Columbus. Uh, right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's where I'd be right now. And instead, we have, I have not heard a thud of practice yet. Uh, it does not seem like it's real because are, I, are, I mean, am I crazy? Are, are people, I mean, are they, I mean, like, are, I'm not watching a lot of NFL Network either right now, or like, sure. I'm just not watching. Because there's nothing on. I mean, like, am I, am I missing highlights that I should be seeing? No. I, well, there's I mean, nothing happening. There's nothing happening. Media, for the most part, there may be a couple of places, but, like, media is not even allowed in anywhere right now during these strength and conditioning portions. And so the only thing that you are seeing right now, the only videos or stills that you are seeing are coming from individual teams, and then they are putting it on – you know, the, the wire service for all of the local and national television outlets to provide. It's actually kind of a win for us on CBS Sports HQ because we're going to get free highlights provided to us. <laughs> it's, a, it's a win of sorts. I mean, I, uh, I mean I, at some point I'm going to write a piece and I'll go ahead and divulge it now. But if you are a football fan, which I assume you are if you're listening or watching, that – out, you know, once rights sort of be are, are taken away, it's really hard to get them back, right? In in almost any uh, part of life, and now that this NFL season, I'm not going to be in a locker room with anyone. I'm not going to be able to get that side conversation in week seven of the game that we just watched. Um, it's all going to be conducted on zo on Zooms, and everyone's going to ask and have all the same answers and all that stuff. And the teams are going to be able to control a lot of narratives throughout the week. That's not good for NFL fans. No. That's not good for, it's certainly not good for betters. Uh, and so, you know, you, if you are a fan, you, I know that no one cares about the media and we're always crybabies, et cetera, et cetera. But if you are a fan, you should hope that our rights and privileges are reinstalled once this pandemic's over. 
Um, yeah, and I think, you know, the, like it's not hard to imagine. So let's say uh, Cam Newton and the Patriots lose in week one. And Cam uh, gets in a, a fight with Julian Edelman on the sidelines for whatever reason. I mean, sure. this is obviously a hypothetical. The Patriots Zoom call fires up. Talk to a couple of people. Edelman comes on. He doesn't say anything. Cam comes on. He gets asked a question. He starts to give an answer. And then all of a sudden it says, the host has ended this meeting. You know, like, <laughs> Bill Belichick has pressed the button to shut it down. I just, there is, you know, there, there is, it's, it's not like, you, you know, you could be, a coach could be doing a Zoom call. It's like, are we going to be able to talk to Cam? Nah. That's right. That's, that's yeah. absolutely right. Like, you, you were to the point where, like, Julian sits down and Cam sits down. They may not even sit down. And, and before, like, I'd, I'd get to the locker room and you'd see that person at the end of the locker room. You've got to go to the locker room. room. You've got to go to the locker room. have to go to the locker room. Not not you. I'm saying, like, the players have to be in the locker room. Now, you can hide in the shower and and do all that, and you can wait people out, and and the PR company, you know, PR teams can escort you in a way that will minimize the number of questions you answer. But if you're a quarterback, you've got to answer questions after the game. And now maybe you don't. That's that's absolutely crazy. I mean, during training camps, you know, every training camp I've gone to, for the most part, Uh, A few teams like the the Chiefs do not make Andy Reid available after every single training camp uh, practice, but a lot of teams do. They they, uh, make the coach available either before or after practice, and in some cases, both. But right now, a lot of teams are just, yeah, we'll give you the coach one day a week. That's where we're already at right now, where it's no skin off anybody's back, like, yeah, let's make it three or four times a week. And no one, to my knowledge, is even doing that. Yeah, and I would assume, too, that, I mean – I think things are going to change coming out of this and we're not, not to, I mean, like I'm never going to probably never going to go bowling again. I don't know if I mentioned yeah. that, you know, I don't, you want to, I don't, do you want to go on a cruise? No, I'm never, I, I've never been on a cruise. I'm not going to go now. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm probably not going to be, you know, banging down the door at Shoney's buffet Shoney's. or golden corral. I mean, I'm not a big golden corral guy. In the first, but I think buffets are probably dead or at least, you know, going to be less popular. And I would assume that, you know, moving forward that NFL teams are less or are, are more likely to restrict locker room access in terms of the volume that is accessible. These players are not going to enjoy the season because it's going to be, you know, it's going to be more restrictive than ever before. Right. But in some ways it's going to be a little more free because you're going to, you're, you're going to like, if you're an NFL player, you got to go to your locker and change your change out of a towel with, a bunch of other dudes and ladies hanging around trying to ask you about the third down. Yeah. But it's also, you're missing out on self-promotion. You're missing okay. out on, on That's building how a Josh re- Norman became big That's, because he would yeah. sit there with the Batman figures in the locker room and say crazy things. That's right. That's how he uh, very, very surely first team all pro named in a Jay-Z song, all of those things. He did help that Josh Norman in 2015 was a very good NFL cor- cornerback and probably most certainly a top three NFL cornerback in 2015. I don't think there's any disputing that, but he also talked himself into a lot of those discussions, even when his play may not have been there. I mean, I remember games that Russell Wilson and Andrew Luck wouldn't look his way, literally would not throw his way. Um, But, but no, the players are certainly going to miss out on that as well. There's, there's a negative to it, uh, but there's also a lot of positives they'll be missing out on. Okay. Um, So there's our, I don't, you didn't really soapbox it, but what you're saying is if you're a fan and somebody's trying to decide, like, you know, pound the table for media access because you want it, it'll be better for you over the long haul. Uh, what about quarterback, quarterback quarantine strategy? <laughs> or um, the quarterback quarantine quandary? Oh, that's good. Thank you. Um, okay, so we've all heard – the idea that teams might quarantine Bruce Arians, Bruce Arians first floated it, I think. Yeah, I think sometime Maybe. in June. Yeah, Basically, like, I'm going to take my third-string quarterback and stick him in a room by himself, clockwork orange style, and make him watch film in the event, you know, with his eyelids peeled open, yeah. make him watch film of Tom Brady in the event that, like, somebody gets sick and then I'll bring him in. Okay, so a lot of issues just logically wrong with that. And I had a GM who told me, okay, what do you do? If you're going to quarantine a quarterback, do you quarantine your first string quarterback uh, and 
he doesn't get any reps that week, do you quarantine your third string quarterback? Because if you're down to your third string quarterback, you're not winning the game. Uh, so it really, it, it doesn't matter, but dig into it. You still want to quarantine your third string quarterback because you're not going to do your first or your second string. You, you start digging into it. And so you have him in the hotel room. And first of all, he has to be in a hotel. He has to be in a controlled environment. He can't be back at home where his kids who are going to school are coming back into the home. He's not quarantined. That's, that's not, he's, so you got to keep him in a hotel. So for, for has, starters, you need a, a young, single, third-string quarterback. That's, that's, that's right. So, Although uh, one, there are different problems with that, but anyway. That's right. One that you can trust to, to remain quarantined. And he watches all the film, and he does all the mental reps. Well, he also still needs physical reps. <laughs> so now you have to uh, provide for him some sort of facility. And, okay, high school, college, maybe he goes to the team practice facility when no one else is there. Uh, what's the, what is his coach going to do? What are the ball boys that are there? Who are his receivers, et cetera, et cetera. You start playing this out and it doesn't really make any sense. Yeah. And then the final part of it all is everyone keeps talking about it and no one is doing it. And I think it's less from a competitive advantage or disadvantage standpoint. And I think it's more just like, yeah, this is a neat thing in theory, but until somebody does it, I don't think I'm going to do it. And so far we have seen just like a bunch of teams were saying uh, last week or two weeks ago, you know what, we're going to go into camp with 90 players. And if you go into camp with 90 players, then you had to split up the teams 45 and 45. Right. But if you went with 80, you didn't have to split up your teams and your team. And what a lot of folks realize. So first of all, the majority of NFL teams went with 80 players. Sure. Some went with 90 and then they realized this is stupid. Why are we splitting up our teams? Let's go back down to 80. And so it's all nice in theory until it gets into practice, and then logic usually wins out. Right. And, I mean, the idea, again, is that you have to have – well, first of all, if this guy is separate and alone, that's great. But if your other quarterback has COVID-19, then there's a decent chance that your center and the left guard and right guard and left tackle and right tackle, they've all been exposed. And probably the wide receiver, you know, it's, so it's, it's, it, it, it is, it's weird. Like you're almost better. I mean, this sounds insane, but if you're, let's say you're the Buccaneers, just hear me out. Are you better off spending the resources and gambling on trying to keep a third back, a third string quarterback who, I mean, I don't know, Drew Stanton, is he still in the league? Like trot his, sure, yeah. roll him out week in a Bernie style and let him dance down the sidelines for, for Bruce Arians. <laughs> or should Tom Brady just go get Corona? Like, I'm not kidding. Like, should no, I mean, no, 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 I, I know. No, no I need, I need to stop you. Okay. You know, when no. the Clemson guys started getting it, you know, people were talking. Yeah. I know people were talking and it was dumb then because of like, course what are we, stupid. but what, but what have we seen recently is that, especially recently is that there are some long-term effects of this that because it was such a new and novel virus, we didn't understand it. Right. But now we're seeing these rather or otherwise healthy young men. Tom Brady is not young at 43, but who Tom have, Brady's high risk, man. <laughs> but they have these, these heart issues, these lung issues. And so it is not, it, you, you want to avoid the virus at all. Costs. I, I, am, I am not being serious when I suggest that, but I, I'm, I'm saying, like, I wouldn't put it past an NFL team to, to, to conspire with said quarterback to get it, to make it happen. You know what I'm saying? To like get past it and have him, have him have antibodies going into September. Now, again, I, I, I would put it past the team. I would hope. I wouldn't put it really past hope. an NFL team. Um, but I, I know I agree with you. It is, it's, it is extremely unlikely that that would ever happen. Now, having said all that, um, I do think that uh, one of the things with the long-term stuff, we don't know if the, secondary things that are happening they're showing up and it's not like everybody who gets corona does not have heart and lung issues but it is happening right. with some people um there's so much we don't know about this we don't know if it is you know if those issues are for life if they're for two weeks if they're for three months right you know, you do, you, we just don't know and that is that is why football is in this weird unknown area particularly college football because different doctors have different opinions of different things and the different leagues are taking different stances and it's just nobody knows the answer and that's that needs to be more common i think when we talk about this is we don't know right you know like that like it is it's very easy to take a hard and fast line 
on something. And that's stupid. It's like taking a hard and fast line on an NFL, on like your stance on an NFL team going to the year. You're like, the Bengals cannot be good. Well, they there's, can. There's no, like, it's so, okay. The Panthers cannot be good. Um, and, and, and Washington cannot be good. And Jacksonville cannot be good. But if you, like, I have no clue in week one if the Patriots or Dolphins are going to win. I have absolutely no clue. And I go back to last year, I went to a Ravens practice during my training camp tour. They had a joint practice with the Jags. And Lamar Jackson just had no sort of deep ball. In fact, he wasn't completing anything past 15 yards. And I wrote at the time, like, he has to work on his intermediate to long throws because he, <laughs> it's just not there. And I thought this was going to be a normal, you know, okay, from year one to year two, now two to three, and he'll get it figured out in year three. And then what does he do in week one against the Dolphins? I mean, he's just chucking the ball down the field perfectly, yeah. running all over him, et cetera, et cetera. And w- what I learned from that experience was, no, even three weeks later, he found his deep ball. Right. And w- – there, there's so many things that I cannot even put my eyes on. I, I don't know if the Falcons are going to have a turnaround this year. I don't know if the Falcons are going to be the team that finished six and two or the team that started one and seven or, or right. whatever they were. Right. That's right. I, there, there's, I, how could I possibly know that? Dan Quinn. And I know that I'm supposed to know that, right. but who am I, who am I going to talk to? I'm going to talk to uh, sources within the Falcons organization. And what are they going to tell me? That the, the six and two team. That that Matt Ryan is back to his MVP form, and that Julio Jones. This offensive line is healthy. Ridley is ready to take the next leap. Hayden Hurst, are you kidding me? Eighty catches, fifteen touchdowns, seven thousand yards, minimum, baby, minimum. And so there's no preseason games that we can all look at and be like, oh boy, they uh, Hayden Hurst, what happened to him? There's right. there, there, you know, like we saw the Atlanta Falcons offensive line in preseason last year, and it became very clear. I was not surprised by their one and seven star based on how terrible their line was in preseason games that I watched with my own eyes. Right. And so yeah. I can be as insidery as anybody else, right? But it's not gonna matter. Nobody's because- spitting pessimism right now. Nobody inside a team is spitting pessimism. Right. And nobody from another team is going to know anything about other, like a separate team because they're not in contact with each other. They're all going to be in bubbles until, until September 10th or September 12th. It's insane. Or September 13th, I guess. It's insane. I mean, it's, it's yeah. going to be impossible to figure out. All right, so we, we mentioned college football. Actually, you know what? We'll take a break. And when we come back, we'll tell you whether or not the NFL will be playing on Saturdays. Okay, so we mentioned college football. It's in peril? We're recording this. JJ and I were talking right now around 2 o'clock on Tuesday, August 11th. That's important because by the time you're listening to this, whether it's in the morning on Wednesday or in the afternoon on Wednesday, college football might not exist. College football might be rolling forward. We just don't know at all. Um, where are you at with college football in, in, as it relates to the NFL possibly playing on Saturday? Just got off the phone, actually, with a source. We were talking through this, uh, a league source. And first of all, I don't have any inside information from any TV networks that may or may not employ me and and you. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you're being serious or not. I don't either. Yeah, no, I, I seriously, I, I don't. Okay, just so we're clear. That's not, no, I, it's not like tongue-in-cheek, like, I don't know. Any, yeah, no, we, we don't know. They we, don't we, do, we, we, we do not know. Because um, they don't know. I, I don't know if they don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> but uh, the, the, the general idea, of course, is if there's not college football, there's inventory from the NFL. Let's put some NFL games on Saturday. So the, 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 the main point that came out of this conversation that I had not thought about was it's not going to happen week one or week two. Sure. That there's going to have to be a ramp up and acclimation of just like we see Saturday games in week 15 or 16 – we're going to start to see them potentially in week six, seven, eight. That's when that normally needs to happen. So the players are obviously, the union is going to push back on this because they're going to say, well, you know, our guys are being put at risk because if they're coming off a Sunday game to Saturday, they're losing a day of rest. And the NFL would try to figure out as equitable a way as possible to make this work. However, the rest days work out for both teams uh, on any given week. But the, the, the return from or for the union side would be if we get these games on Saturday television, our revenue will likely go up in 2020 
which means that we should not have as great a shortfall or any sort of deficit or even potentially uh, uh, an increase. I don't know the numbers on this. I haven't studied it that much. But if the floor is at $175 million next year for the salary cap, and you're able to get some money, and maybe it ticks up to 190, maybe you get it back to status quo at 198.2, that means that a bunch of guys who are going to be cut next year, uh, who, uh, without a doubt, the, the $6 million linebacker is getting cut next year, right. um, that they are not cut. And so that's the give and take there. So I, I would say a couple of things on that. One, if, if the NFL – now it gets a little tricky, and I don't I don't know the ins and out of this completely either because we we're not privy to the broadcast, uh, net, the network broadcast contracts. Right. But I will be curious to see what the league does, vis a vis selling the Saturday games. For instance, let's say you have a an inventory of, I, I guess it would be one two, uh, let's say you got fourteen games on Sunday, and the goal is to take four, you take those fourteen games and let's just split those. You know what, 13 games. Crap, that does, that's not easy to split. Um, I'm, trying, I'm trying to think of the best way. Like, let's say you're going to move three games to Saturday. Yeah. Do those three games that are moved to Saturday stick with the network that currently has them? Or do the networks even say to the NFL, listen, auction one of these off to Amazon? Because it behooves the networks, it behooves CBS and Fox and NBC for the NFL to get more money. Like, you know what I mean? And it I, does. I don't think do that because that's inventory. For instance, we wouldn't want to give up CBS would not want to give up a game. Correct. That could no. be you know, broadcast well, you, on Saturday and marketed. You, you don't want to give up a game. And just from a negotiating standpoint, you don't want to introduce a new player into the, sure. the equation. Uh, you know, again, without any inside knowledge, I would have to imagine that uh, any current network that has rights doesn't want another network getting involved. Now, that, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, how that's going to work, I don't necessarily, I certainly don't know. Um, well, and here's the other tricky thing, too, is that traditionally these later season Saturday games when the college football season is wrapped up are played on NFL Network because the NFL wants to drive eyeballs to the NFL Network. So you almost wonder, would the NFL be willing to buy back? Like, like, I, I guess I'm trying to think through that like it, because they're not just going to be like, hey, those three games right there, they're going to Saturday and those are ours. You know, it, it, I, don't, I don't know how they'll do it with the simulcast. The broadcast networks are, tra- are typically – okay and this has been especially true in the pandemic working with the the league or the sports team or whoever it is like we've seen when thursday night football started on cbs we brought we simulcast it on nfl network right you know so i i think that's sort of a tricky thing maybe it's just as simple as we're taking three games and plopping them on saturday and maybe it doesn't matter if they play college football like if the acc and sec play do they still play nfl games on saturday that's a great question. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you, you certainly want to respect college football. You, you know, there is a bit of a gentleman's agreement involved here. And then there's some broadcast uh, issues as well, where ESPN and CBS and Fox, very obvious, well, not Fox, ESPN and CBS have, uh, have deals and relationships with the SEC and with the ACC. Yep. Um, the, you know, Fox has the relationship with the big 10, uh, and whatnot. And so, you know, you get into a lot of, of issues that are going to be playing themselves out very soon, but I'll tell you this, talking with somebody earlier today, again, a league source, they did not feel that it was as imminent as it felt on Monday that the college football season is kaput. Mm. That you're, I mean, you remember yesterday. I know that folks are listening to this on Wednesday. So go we, back to Monday. We, we, on Monday, it was over. Done. It was over. It was absolutely and, over. Not yeah, all, and, I mean, on, the, and on Tuesday, right? there was sort of a wave back the other way. And now part of that is you're on Twitter and there's pushback from various people. Um, and then part of that is, you know, you the ACC medical doctor came out and said, we think we can make this happen. You know, I, think, I, I think that the ACC and the SEC – I, it's hard for me to think that they're going to punt on the season before week one happens. It's really hard for me to see those two conferences punting. I don't and understand then, why the, I don't understand why they did what they did. Like the big Ten's like, here's our schedule. And then three days later, they're like, Oh, we might be done. It's like, what, who is, who is pulling the strings here? Yeah. It, what are you it, doing? It, didn't, it didn't make a lot of sense, but the, the sheer amount of money that is involved 
you know, people keep saying university presidents don't want this liability. There's not football. How much of the campus is going to be furloughed? If, uh, you know, right. And, you know, I went to UNC Chapel Hill. Like if there's not football, if there's not basketball, it's not just about the university anymore. I mean, it's, uh, the, there are a lot of lives that are involved here. And those are government jobs, by the way. Right. They're not, I mean, they're not, I mean, right. Like they, if you, well, it's not, but it's not just government jobs. I'm, I'm talking about Franklin Street. I'm talking about the, the pizzerias. Oh, oh, I'm sure. ta- you know, the trickle, down, the trickle down effect is insane. All insane. of a sudden, if there's no, if there's no basketball and there's no football, like what is, uh, what's that, uh, what's the, the, uh, what's the place everybody goes to for football with the deck and the. Oh, top of the hill. There's no, what happens at the top of the hill? Like, like right. their business is already struggling. It's only going to get worse with no football. Right. And the same can be applied at Oxford, Mississippi and Clemson, South Carolina, et cetera, et cetera. And so there are massive, massive amounts of money that um, that right now obviously hang in the balance. But what doesn't make sense and what I do believe a lot of coaches, you know, uh, Harbaugh, Mac Brown's making the point who are saying, look at the structure we have with these guys. Granted, kids are just now starting to come on campus. Non players are coming on campus and the numbers can change. But so many of these teams don't have any positive tests and haven't had any positive tests for a very long time. And, you know, there is, frankly, there is legitimacy and credence to the, the safest place they can be right now yeah. it, it is the structure of a college football program. Now, is it going to be safe if they're playing against Liberty University uh, and Liberty is doing whatever the hell they want to do? No, it, it does not. It is not the same thing. But for right now, it's hard for me to feign an argument against that. Yeah, and I've talked to people in college football, uh, you know, that have said the people involved in you know, the, the administrative aspect of, of this team stuff. They're like, listen, this the out of conference stuff is basically off the table because you have to you can't like let's Liberty was not I don't want to say a specific similar example. Like you can't go to Liberty or have Liberty come to you and play Liberty in the middle of your season when Liberty is testing maybe once a, you know, maybe testing once a week and right. they have an outbreak on the team. And then all of a sudden you have an outbreak on the team and you lose three starting linemen, your starting quarterback and you have Clemson next. And that's what, that's exactly why all these coaches and I see it from fans, but I'm really disappointed by coaches who say, uh, Oh, so I, maybe it was Dabo who said, <laughs> okay, so we, we can go all over the eastern seaboard, but we can't go up to Columbia and play South Carolina. Right. And it's like, no, because they are under, and I understand they're a power conference and, and all that stuff, but the point is not about travel. It's not about how long you're in an airplane with a bunch of the same guys that you've been tested with for right. the last three months. That's, that's not the point. The point is absolutely that you're playing as a team that has different protocols and standards, and you have to have your standards that align. And if you don't, then you open yourself up to unnecessary risk. Right. And I, I, I thought that was obvious. I mean, I guess Dabo, I mean, I guess Dabo's just like kicking the crap out of South. He's like, I, mean, I can't miss kicking out of South Carolina while they're down. God dang, man. Come on. Boy. And maybe, maybe it was Will Muschamp and, and we'll flip it. I, I want to be fair, but it was one of those I, two. Really, Will Muschamp like, wasn't complaining about not getting to play Clemson. I mean, uh, well. and, and look, this goes to. And you can draw whatever analogy you want to draw, whatever comparison you want to draw. But the problem with college football right now is that there are all these independently acting groups who are doing things differently and have different doctors and different stats and different information and different agendas and different approaches and different people governing them. And the the group in charge of everybody, the NCAA, of course, the group in charge of everybody, is a fact. Saying nothing. Leadership list pile of crap that won't do anything like if you read the article from uh, God, uh heather uh heather dinich of espn where she talked about the, the 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 heart stuff and the lung stuff and the longer term issues they went to the ncaa and said hey how many tests does the ncaa have? how many positive tests does the ncaa have as a whole under its you know under what currently you know what's been going on and the ncaa referred them referred her and, and the writers of the article to the individual institutions so instead of getting, you see, you don't have a number. You want us right. to go ask every single college in the NCAA how many? T- how many? Like, are you kidding me? And, then, and that's why that's why college football and the NFL are not the same. Right. Yes, it is. It is the same sport, but the NFL does not have 
uh, players who are going to on-campus institutions for learning with other people who do not have to abide by their standards. They obviously have a centralized uh, governing body that is that is presenting the standard. And so as long as everyone continues to be engaged in this contract, which again, the fact that the numbers, the day of the opt-out deadline, that there were 69 opt-outs, and I can't remember the exact number, 58 maybe, positive COVID tests from the day that guys reported up until the, the, the opt-out deadline. Well, had you told me that in July that there would be more opt-outs than, than positive, positive tests? To, no way. There's absolutely no way. The over-under over over under in, in the beginning of July for positive tests of NFL players would have been like 325. Yeah, sure. At least You're 200. Like, I'll, I'll take the over, you know, and it's, it's sure. close. It's not even close. And so that's another thing. I'm going to be writing this in, in my notebook uh, later this week on CBSSports.com is that the, the players, you know, they do deserve some credit. Now, here's the one thing that could throw that off because, again, you're still practicing. Okay, so strength conditioning is happening. Once you start practicing and scrimmaging against each other, is that going to be an issue? Well, I mean, if everybody's still testing negative, right. then no. If COVID is not present, then it doesn't matter what you do. Um, but the issue is going to be, and I think we're going to see this, is that when these guys with kids and the kids are going back to school, and you know, we don't know how great of carriers the kids are, but anytime that you disrupt your own bubble, which yeah. is what going back to school is going to do, um, along with being great for children's development, et cetera, et cetera. School is very important. No one denies they, that school is very important, but when you put a bunch of people together, especially a bunch of, and I have one, a snot-nosed, Kid, like person who like my son has become very good at like if he sneezes like he he was he was sitting with my mother-in-law and sneezed and like freaked out he was like i'm so sorry like he's gotten good like it's crazy how good you That's know great. Wow. He, he, he knew at my parents house when he went in he knew he had to wear a mask and so he wore he, you know, he's like oh, give me my mask like i mean but like you put all these kids together in school it's not going to be a super sanitary environment it's not. And so, can, yeah, I mean, and, and so we don't know what kind of carriers they are, but obviously they are going to be leaving the house and coming back into the house. And if, yep. the, if the NFL player father who is there is, is also there, that is obviously going to increase the, the chances of him bringing that into the facility, because right now we do not have that. And so I think that we should be bracing for in mid-August to late August and, and maybe around Labor Day, uh, as these uh, kids are reporting, uh, to school that that could happen. And I don't think that it necessarily signals that NFL players are now becoming lax with the rules or right. anything. If that, because honestly, again, we all expected these guys doing whatever the hell they wanted to do in June and July and traveling from all over the country, they were going to come in and it was going to be a COVID fest. It was going to take two weeks for everybody to quarantine. And about now is when we would see the numbers go down. These guys have clearly been a part of the contract and they are doing their part and that is evidenced by the numbers and they deserve credit for that yeah that, that's a great point and it sort of makes you um you know it, it like uh, you know it makes you wonder about how, why hadn't there been like some rogue team like the cardinals you know where the cardinal the cardinals all went to a casino what the hell is the matter with you or you know the indians uh recently and obviously i mean the, the st louis cardinals and then the cleveland indians uh mike clevenger so they had zach plesak who, and actually Dan Plesak, I think, is our colleague at CBS, maybe? Or no, he's at MLB Network. NC State grad, that's what it is. I knew there was something. Right. But anyway, he, um, great school, by the way. He, um, he, he pitched there. So Zach Plesak went out and saw friends, and then they sent him home. And Mike Clevenger was like, pound the table for Plesak. And then they, the, the Indians found out that Clevenger went out in Chicago with Plesak, and then he got booted from his start. And even in the bubble in the NBA, DeAndre Ayton missed – a corona te a mandatory corona test on sunday and then barely made it to the game on monday and missed the first quarter i like i don't there's so many more variables in play with the nfl because of how many guys are involved in the close proximity of how they play and you're right i i would be shocked if when we go back to school and it starts i mean we're again this is wednesday august 12th monday is is my son's first day in a small pod school that you know he's not going to the actual school but like when we go back to school there's going to be a, a spike. I, I would be stunned if two weeks after school starts, there isn't some kind of spike just because of the very nature of transmission here. That's right. Uh, again, the virus hasn't gone anywhere. It's not going anywhere. And so we have to snuff it out. 
Um, but yeah, it, it's very normally, very clearly going to happen. And again, I just, I think it's, it's important because, you know, NFL players don't necessarily get a fair shake all the time, but I've really sort of, I've wanted to pound the table on this because those numbers, and it's not just because I have such an inflated sense of self that I thought that my information was going to be golden and now it's coming way lower. I mean, again, I think a lot of people thought the numbers were going to be much higher than they I think the basic, the basic math tells you that the numbers will be much higher, especially when you factor in the demographics involved. It's not like all of these NFL players are married with two kids. Right. You know, and quarantining at home or, I mean, I, I would assume that some of these guys who, and it's, look, it's entirely possible that some of these guys already had it. Well, and so a hundred or so had tested positive from March until the reporting date. So right. you add it all up and it was something like 170 total still players, really, but really even low. still lower than what we thought yeah. that we would be at. Yeah. And, and I, yeah, I mean, I agree. You give them credit where credit's due. If you're if you're a guy who's like knows you're coming in on the roster bubble, by the way, don't, you you're not getting you know like you're you're avoiding you're avoiding it like the plague because yes. you you really want to make sure that you can get in there and that you can try to earn your roster spot. And you're, if you're staying rookie, in the hotel room and you right. are just playing video games. That's it. Yeah, and I mean there is something to be said for you know like if you're you're youthful without children, yeah. like it's it's not the I mean like obviously you'd rather be out getting beers and hanging out in the Charlotte sun. But you know, well, I have I have been hanging out in the Charlotte Sun. Like I went to a buddy's pool over the weekend. Yeah, we go to our pool. Social, all the time. Yeah, I you know I distanced. Of course, uh, I'm actually doing dry August. By the way, Will. Good for so, you. How's that going? Yeah. Uh, it's going. It's a lot easier today than it was August second. I can August tell you that. 2nd is, August second through fifth is rough. I actually should have <laughs> done that. I should have done dry August. But yeah, but it's um, been good. But um, yeah, but I mean, like, there, there's lots of things. Like you like playing golf. There's lots of things you can do to get at right. where you're not. You don't feel like you're locked inside. But you can also, when you are inside, you know, if you're, if you're somebody who's single without kids, you can entertain yourself. There's lots of streaming options. There are lots of books. I mean, there's a lots of things you can do. I, there, there's maybe a misguided sense that these guys are like, oons, 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 in the, you know, in the right, club all the right, time. Right, right. There, there certainly is. You can, there's plenty of things. I had one source earlier today tell me uh, that some, some players that he had spoken with had dumped their girlfriends just said, I'm so focused on this season and getting through this season that, you know, he, he said, some players have said, Hey, here's the deal. I'm either going to stay in the hotel or I'm going to stay with my family in the house. But if we're in the house, here's the rules that you have to abide by because I have to abide by those rules because this is how it works. Right. And that other players who do not have families just said, you know what, girlfriend, sorry, this, this ain't going to work. For right now, I'm staying in and playing video games. Dude, I mean, this is this is not the NBA where you are. You have this is not like you, like so CJ Mosley opted out, and I thought right. that was smart because he has a giant contract and he can defer his giant contract one year without running the risk of re-injuring himself or you know catching a, a, a you know a disease in COVID nineteen and various other reasons. If you're if you're like if you're a mid level guy and you're 28, I mean, you're running out of time to in your earning years. If you're a non quarterback, like th you, this is you, a you really need to play because 90% right. it, it's, it's a logical thing to say that 90% of the income that you're going to make from 20 to 55 is going to come in these four, five, six yes. years. Yeah. And so, you know, and we see it in football and we've also seen it in college football where these guys, plenty of guys have tweeted out, listen, I'd love to opt out. And I respect the guys who have opted out. But I got people I got to feed. Like, yeah. I, I can't, uh, you know what, if, if I get COVID, I get COVID. And it's a shame that that, that has to be the mentality. But I 100% understand the mentality. If I'm a, if I'm a, if I'm a mid-round pick who could become a first or second round pick by coming back and having a huge season, I am slamming the table to, like, do whatever is possible to play football and to let me, like, I, I mean, you know, you don't, you're not, opt I mean, that's, it, that's a huge sum of money. Yeah. A huge sum of money. Um, okay. Do you think that when we start the season, Pete Prisco and I talked about this, when we start the season and we mentioned how great guys have been, do we believe that once teams start traveling, there will be these instances of dudes going out and, uh, you know, along that same vein, do you think that how will teams travel? Like, will the Raiders fly to Charlotte on Saturday night for week one? 
Like yeah, Friday, that's Friday. Like, what what is going to happen with that? Because that's a tough flight and a tough adjustment, and it matters a lot for how the game plays out from a time adjustment standpoint, in my opinion. I think this is where directors of football ops really make their earn, money, earn because, their earn their cash this year. Right. I think that there's going to be a lot of hotel ballroom uh, walkthroughs. Yeah. Um, I think. Yeah, if you have a cross-country flight, you're obviously going to want to be as adjusted as possible. It's going to be hard on all the West Coast teams, no doubt, who travel more than everyone else. Um, you look at, you know, the Patriots, who don't they have a, a back-to-back L.A. games like Sunday LA, and Thursday? Yeah, and they were going to stay over, but now the NFL is like, you can't do that. It's like, well, you made the schedule, guys. Right. Like, what, what uh, you, yeah, yeah. And, and so I can't you, imagine you that they're going to go. Sunday – back Monday or back Sunday night, back Wednesday or back Thursday. That, that ain't going to work. It's, it's hard to imagine. But then again, you know, these NFL facilities are the best place for the NFL players because they're probably the most sanitary places. And so where do, you, where do the Patriots uh, practice Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Hey, do, do they practice at a college? You know, like what, what, would, what would you typically do? You would typically do something like that. Or you just um, you'd be like you call a hotel and be like, hey we want to you know the, the football ops guy is going to get a local hotel, or like a, do- a dorm room or something like that and they crash there and they practice at the do you know practice at the college facility it's not a big deal that's not going to fly, and but so do do you go back and forth because that's not fair to the Patriots, um so I I don't know what's going to happen there there are a lot of a lot of questions still left unanswered. Okay, I I think the NFL want them traveling as close to the game time as possible. But if you're going east to west or west to east, you almost – I guess east to west you could go day of. Like if you flew out at 8 a.m. and you flew west. I don't know what science says on that. If you had a 1 o'clock game, it's not going to work. If you had a night – so like for instance, the, take away the Patriots Sunday game. Let's say the Patriots play the Seahawks on a Thursday night. You could leave Boston at 8 a.m. Now, no, the sports science sucks on this, just to be clear. <laughs> yeah, right. the, the performance issues are there, but from a medical sterilization standpoint, you could leave, and timing, you could leave Boston at 8 a.m. or 6 a.m. and land three or four hours later, and it's, you know, seven, it's, it's 6 or 7 a.m. I think, I, that makes I think a you got really it. You, long day. Yeah, you have to be in the city that you're going. If you're playing on Sunday, you have to be in that city Saturday. And, well, I don't know about – like, I don't think – like, I think the Panthers and Falcons, if they played. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're a car right away, then sure. Right. No, we're no talking, doubt about it. We're talking – but we're talking – if you're crossing a time – yeah, maybe not even crossing a time zone. If you are going from one coast to the other, if you're crossing yeah, two I, time zones or whatever it is, you probably need to be in that city that same day. That, that Yeah, so the AFC North – for example, they can absolutely, okay, guys, instead of waking up at 8 a.m., we're waking up at 6.30, and yeah. we're, we're taking the bus down. Right. I think that's fine. That's not a problem. Yeah. Or like, it, or like it, the Patriots play the Jets. You know, like, sure. Those are not going to be issues. Th- those should not be issues. Even but, Carolina playing Tampa, you can, you know, you can kind of get away with that. Yeah, but I, I do believe any sort of legitimate travel, if we're talking about uh, Tampa to Dallas. Um, I, I believe that if the Bucks were to play in Dallas this season, that the Bucks would need to be in Dallas on Saturday night. Yeah, that's right. This is why the NFL should have waited on the schedule. Because you could, you could at least, like, you wouldn't build that Patriots back-to-back. I was surprised that, that this, how the schedule came out as well, that it was not built to chop off the non-conference games. Uh, and then to chop off the non-division games. I was very surprised by that. Yeah. I, I did not get the structure. It'll be, lots can change. Everything's fluid. Every hour is different, JJ. Tell you this, I think we're supposed to hit on it, but I'm going to go ahead and hit on it right now. Dwayne Haskins, I believe he's going to be the starter in Washington. Ooh. I think all of this uh, competition talk. How, why did you think we weren't supposed to hit on it? Well, I just didn't know if we were going to run out of time or not. So I just wanted to hit it before you, you know, wrapped up your pod. Debo actually deleted it from the rundown, but I was going to wrap up, but no, but good call. I think so. You, okay. you, well, I'll just, I'll be quick because I wrote this in my notebook last week, but Ron Rivera loves competition. Uh, he is always very, very optimistic. 
he is more optimistic than Pollyanna herself, especially when it comes to his players' injuries. It is incredible the comeback that Alex Smith has made to even be cleared for football activities. Sure. Right now he's on the pup list. But um, it does not seem I, – I would be stunned if Alex Smith – beats out Dwayne Haskins for the week one starting job. I'm not saying that they're going to end the season with Dwayne Haskins, uh, anything like that. But I think Dwayne has made steps uh, this off season from things that I hear out of that building. Um, and that Alex Smith, they also, Washington is not in a position to uh, say anything negative about Alex Smith, both for, like from a PR standpoint, sure. the guy gave sure. his leg to the organization. The organization is embroiled in so much controversy it, it, it is o- the only thing they can do is heap praise upon Alex Smith and make it seem as though he truly is in a competition and has a legitimate chance at winning the starting quarterback job. So once you kind of take that away and you just, again, use logic on the guy that they spent the 15th overall pick on who did make some progress at the end of the season. He's better had, than people thought last year. Yes. Who has had a solid off season, according to sources over there against a guy who still is on the physically unable to perform list less than a month away from week one, it's going to be Dwayne Haskins in week one. Okay. That's what they should do. You got to figure out what you got. Your 15th overall pick last year. Played with a a rookie in Terry McLaurin. He's like his only guy last year. Yeah. Got nobody in the backfield. Plus, you know, you go out and have a good season from Dwayne Haskins. And by good season, I mean like, I mean – this would be highly optimistic. Let's say 4,000 yards and 20 touchdowns. 3,500 yards and 18 touchdowns. There we go. Okay. okay. A, a, Dan, a Daniel Jones season without okay. the fumbles. Right, 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 right. You do that, and all of a sudden, it elevates Ron Rivera. It elevates Scott Turner. It takes all the – you know, I mean, they're already ele- – they, you know, they're, at, they're where they're at. But, like, you get – you really make Dan Snyder happy. Like, he's already yeah. given you anything you want, but if you, but if you make Dwayne Haskins look good – that it makes Dan Snyder look good and it makes him, it makes him more likely to continue to give big chunks of uh, authority, responsibility, I don't know what you to call it, to, to Ron Rivera, which he's clearly already given. Right. Okay. All right. Dwayne Haskins week one. We assume there'll be a week one for Dwayne Haskins players. We certainly hope there will be. JJ, always a pleasure, buddy. Talk to you soon.